and welcome to the first lesson in Educator.com's Introduction to PHP course. In today's lesson, we'll be providing an overview of the material that we're going to cover in this course, as well as providing an introduction into what PHP is. So what actually is uh, PHP? Well, the name itself is it's a recursive acronym that stands for PHP Hypertext Preprocessor. And the name's not so important as actually what PHP is. And what PHP is is a general purpose uh, scripting language, which is a particular kind of programming language. Its most common use, and the use we're going to be using it for in this class, is as a server-side scripting language that allows you to create uh, dynamic web pages and interactive web applications. You can, it allows programmers to create web pages that have uh, dynamic uh, page content, such as uh, dynamically generated search results. It allows programmers to create web pages that can process user input, such as input from HTML forms and allows programmers to have code that performs services like accessing databases and even processing credit card transactions. So there's actually a lot of uh, server-side scripting languages out there in the world. And why learn PHP? In this slide we're going to go over some of the reasons. Uh, the first one being is that it's the most popular server-side scripting language in use today by far. Additionally, it's free, open source, and it works on all major operating systems and with the majority of modern web servers. Additionally, it's, uh, you can quickly and easily get started with it, but it also provides advanced features, uh, so it's a powerful and robust language. One of its uh, key features is that it can easily interface with most modern databases like MySQL, and it does so using uh, built-in extensions that come uh, directly with the PHP core. And finally, it's also the language behind some of the web's most popular uh, web frameworks and contact man management systems, such as Cake, PHP, CodeIgniter, and Zent Framework, which are uh, three different common frameworks used. And then uh, some content management slash web framework systems, such as Drupal, Joomla, and WordPress. Additionally, PHP uh, is, because it is so widely used, has an extremely large user base and is extremely well documented. So in this course, uh, we're going to be using the concepts, uh, we're going to be teaching the concepts of PHP by building up a fully functional sample web application. The web application we're going to be creating is an example of a, it's a mock web store called the Educator Store. Uh, it's going to do a couple things. It's going to implement a simple shopping cart, and it's also going to have a form where uh, customers can email their comments to the store administrator directly. Um, if you go ahead and you actually continue on with the PHP course sequence here at educator.com and take the advanced PHP course, um, the development of this web application will continue in the advanced course as well. So when new concepts are presented like session management, MySQL database integration, and object-oriented design, you'll be able to see how they get integrated into this uh, web application that we started off in the introductory lesson. So let's actually take a quick look at what the final web application is going to look like. So if we browse to the final version of our web app and we go to the home page, which is called store.php, um, you can see it's a, a simple store interface. Uh, and basically it has a couple of different departments, uh, apparel, electronics, and sporting goods, each with a couple of different items in it. Right now, it's uh, this, because it's a basic store, it just has a few items. If you click on any of the department names, for example, in this uh, left-hand navigation bar, let me move this up and make it a little bigger. You can see the departments that are you can see the items that are contained in that department. In this case, uh, an LCD television and a DVD player shows uh, the price of the elements of the items. And actually, if you click on any of the items, it takes you to an information page for that particular item that shows the item's number, its price, uh, a small or a larger image of the item, and then a, a comment or description about what the item is. The web store also provides a simple checkout form, or excuse me, a simple shopping cart form that allows you to select which items in the store you'd like to purchase and then uh, go ahead and check out. So if we go ahead, for example, and select one of each of these items that are currently in the store and go ahead and check out, what it's going to do is it's going to calculate our shopping cart total. And in this case, it's going to be using a sales tax calculation as well. And then it's going to ask you to enter your shipping information. I'm just going to go ahead and enter some sample information here. And 
And then what you can do is you can click on, allows the customer to click on the complete order button. And what it's gonna do is output a message saying that your order was completed on a certain date at a certain time. It's gonna tell you the total of the order and it's basically going to uh, uh, echo to you uh, the address that you provided for shipping the products you chose in the, in the shopping cart. And actually the other thing it's gonna be doing behind the scenes is it's actually going to be, we're gonna be integrating email functionality so that when a user or a customer submits an order on the website, an email is actually sent to the store administrator containing the uh, information about the web order. So for example, if we load our email client, uh, in this case Thunderbird, and we look at the email that was generated from this uh, shopping cart, uh, we can see it's an e email that was sent and says your order from Educator Store was made on this date and time, and then it provides a description of uh, the different items that were purchased, their prices and which quantities, the total of the uh, order, and then the shipping information for the customer. The other uh, option that the store provides is a contact us form which allows a user to basically email comments about the store to the store administrator, which is a uh, common functionality on, on many websites out there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and demonstrate this quickly. Provide a uh, test, some test comments to the site. And when the user go, goes ahead and clicks on the contact us button, it's gonna go ahead and send out an email to the store administrator. Uh, in this case, it, Put, outputs a message that says thank you for your comments and actually the store administrator can go and um, look in their uh, store admin, admin account in this case uh, we're using Thunderbird and we can see uh, the comments that were submitted by the user it says Matthew Makaj has had some comments for the store and then lists the comments that I had submitted So this educator store is interesting uh, because it demonstrates many of the features and capabilities uh, that are uh, what make PHP so great. Uh, one of the main things it does is it shows the use of dynamic content generation. And you can see that when, if we go back to our shopping cart, and if we select one item from the store and we go to checkout, you can see that it actually calculates the total and then outputs it. Um, this is not, uh, this total is not hard coded into this HTML page. It's something that's uh, dynamically calculated and uh, dynamically output each time the user submits a shopping cart. Additionally, uh, the store demonstrates how using PHP can ease website maintenance. And uh, the way it does that is kind of sort of allowing a template system to be developed. So for example, if we look at any of the items in the store, the URL of, of the items, uh, the page that sh displays the item's information is actually uh, all the same URL. It's called item.php. Um, but what PHP allows us to do is to pass uh, information, in this case an item ID, to the web page so that it can dynamically load information about a particular item and load it up for the user. What that allows us to do is have one PHP uh, page to maintain that outputs information about a particular item, even though we may have thousands of items in the store. That greatly increases the maintainability of the application because instead of having to have a separate page for maybe 1,000 items in the store, we have one PHP page that is just able to load information from sort of a database. Uh, we're not going to be using actual database here, but uh, sort of a, a catalog uh, that's on the back end that contains information about all of the different items in the store. Additionally, the store shows how with PHP you can use form input processing, and we saw that in two places. Uh, one was on where the user entered their shipping information, that was an HTML form, and then also when the user submitted comments uh, on the contact us form. It also shows uh, how PHP provides a lot of built-in advanced functionality. For example, uh, in this application we use email functionality in two spots, both in emailing the contents of the order to the store administrator and also uh, emailing a user's comments from the contact us form. So what are you actually going to learn about uh, PHP in this course? Um, first off, you're going to learn about sort of some web fundamentals, the basics of how websites and PHP work together. And then we're going to go through and teach you how to set up a local PHP development environment, uh, which will allow you to uh, practice the code examples in the course, work on the homework challenges, and to begin to develop your own PHP code. And this is a, a key issue to go over because it, 
that's one of the common roadblocks for new PHP developers is actually getting their development environment set up. So we're going to help to walk you through that process. Additionally, we're going to cover all of the PHP programming basics, things like syntax, data types, variables. Uh, there's a bunch of other things you can see here, such as constants, operators, control structures, and even user-defined functions. We're going to learn how to process form data in PHP, which is going to include a review of how to use HTML forms. And one of the most interesting things is we're going to use, learn how to use include files and user-defined functions to develop scalable and flexible uh, web applications. And the way it, we're going to learn how to do that is by being able to reuse code in multiple spots. We're also going to cover how to uh, cover solid programming practices and method methodologies uh, so that you become a good programmer. So who is this course uh, designed for? Well, basically, it's designed for web developers seeking to build their, uh, their web development skill set so that they can learn to add dynamic content and advanced functionality to their websites. Uh, students, uh, as, a, as a basis, should have a solid understanding of HTML and, to a lesser extent, have a, a menial understanding of cascading style sheets. Additionally, one of the key things to note is that it is assumed that students have little or no prior programming experience. So this is not only is an introduction to PHP, but in a way it's an introduction to programming. Uh, because of this, the course actually kind of breaks down into three different categories uh, of material. The first one is just going to be programming basics. And this is programming concepts, such as what a variable is, what an if statement is, that apply to all programming languages. And then we're going to learn how to apply that specifically using PHP. We're also going to be covering uh, web fundamentals, such as, again, how the web works. We're going to be learning about the HTTP protocol, for example, and how that relates uh, in the PHP-specific way. So that ends today's lesson. Thank you for watching Educator.com, and look forward to seeing you at the next lesson.